Duh. We're back. We're back. Episode 33, the remake, because we tried to do episode 33 live on YouTube, and I don't like the way that that played out, so we're not going to use that as an actual podcast. We're just going to leave it on YouTube as a live stream mm-hmm. that people can go back and watch, but we're going to change the name to the episode 33, just kidding. <laughs> episode 33, just kidding. Yep. I love that. Because. Why not? Screw it. Screw it. Why not? I have to cut that out. Two minutes in and already dropped an F-bomb. Oh, wow. T-shirts have all gone out. Uh, we don't have yeah. a single order in queue right now, which is super dope, even though we still have some of the tattoo shirts left. Um, forgot to get my koozie. So you guys will be seeing my energy drink. Scrub. I'm slacking, really slacking there as you got your to be better energy drink over there. <laughs> so bougie with your straw. That's funny. One day we'll actually have a to be better energy drink. How, how wild would that be? That would be absolutely insane. And... I would be so particular about everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. We could have your drinks, her drinks, his and her drinks. Could we have them like formulated for certain things for like males and females? Yeah. And, oh, my God. We could. Do you remember um, the cigarette ads from the 40s, 50s and 60s, how they used to have they would sell cigarette butt filters that had red dye on them already to hide <laughs> the lipstick? For real. I love that. If we did his and her drinks, you could do her drinks with, with like a red lip mark on it. So they just come that way. It's like an homage to old marketing. I love that. It's cool, right? That's a really good idea. Yeah. Yep. Giving oh. out free marketing tips, ladies and gentlemen. I would also love to do like a vintage skincare line. Yeah. Where it's like tinted to where it gives <laughs> that look of like applying makeup. I don't like the way makeup feels on my face. Um, I tried getting like a matting powder because I noticed my face was getting really oily on camera. And I have broken out. And I'm trying. It's clearing up though. It is clearing up. I've gotten a new skincare routine. You shouldn't have said that. Comments and be like, what's the skincare routine teaches? <laughs> I do plan on vlogging it. Yeah. I, I, I feel myself coming out of my depression. Not coming out of my depression. It is becoming more manageable. It That's is no because longer. we're not reading negative emails constantly anymore. Yeah, that is definitely a big factor into it. It is no longer a massive Doberman screaming in my face. It's a little chihuahua that I can be like, okay, go. Yep. Come on, Taco Bell. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I want to get more into the vlogging. I was actually standing in there doing my my space buns, which everybody calls them. And I was like, OK, damn, maybe I really should make a video about that. Because uh, I notice when I do it dry versus damp. They sit differently. Like right now, I like how this sits like you can see them, but it's closer to my head. It's not big and poofy like Minnie Mouse ears. And sometimes it's just how I, I feel I want to look. And then sometimes I do want the over dramatic, fluffy hair. Right. Well, I mean, you yeah. can do that in the vlog. Uh, you've been vlogging a lot. I just have to edit it. I have been vlogging <clears throat> a lot. For those of you who want to see the vlog, you have to log. You have to join our Patreon. That's Patreon only content. It is. And we do a lot of that. There's more vlogs going on Patreon right now than anything else. We've done one exclusive video in like the last three weeks. The rest has been all vlogs. Yeah, we did the um, Adam 22 conversation on Patreon, too. We, we there's new content going on Patreon. Yeah, I'm pretty is. excited about it. Yeah, I'm glad that we're doing it too. Um, move it that way. What? Push push the microphone that way. This Th- way. That way, just a little bit. Keep going. There you go. Okay. I don't know what it looks like. Right. So thank you for giving me the pointers. <laughs> it was literally a pointer. It was. Yeah. <laughs> um. I'm enjoying doing the vlogs. Yeah. I'm having a lot of fun with them. It's becoming my morning routine to wake up, take care of my plants, whatever dishes need to be done, clean up whatever needs to be done, move things from the dishwasher, knock out the morning chores, and then sit outside, enjoy my morning medication, and vlog. Yep. So let me ask you this now that you're actually starting to get into this, because at first you were super uncomfortable. With the vlogging? Yes. I was, yeah. Do you find... That you now have a, a way to just word vomit everything. Yes. Right? And it's just a camera. And in the worst case scenario, it gets deleted. Yeah, Best no case scenario, you get it out of your head. Yeah. That is why I have always done that. That's why I've always been so comfortable talking to the camera because I know that I can just delete it. No one will ever see what I don't want them to see. Right. But I can get it out. I sat in here yesterday and vlogged mm-hmm. camera stuff like microphone and like podcast stands and like how I do all of this. I know that that's only interesting to about 10 people. Right. But it it allowed me to talk about my process and get it out of my head. Mm-hmm. 
versus just sitting here doing it. It was right. content of something that I had to do anyways, and I got to talk about it. And there are people who are interested in it. Yep. Um, I'm going to say this before I lose it. I think it would be a smart idea to take little snippets from the content that we put on Patreon and post it onto YouTube. That way they can see what's going over there. I think some of the conversations that we're having on Patreon, just in our vlogs, are very thought provoking. Mm. And I don't know. I have it's to be ve- I have to be very careful with that. Why? Um, because of security issues. Like I, we just upgraded all of our security. Like we don't have any blind spots at all on the property anymore. Right. But I I noticed that when we vlogged, I had to delete like three of the vlogs that I had up on on Patreon because okay. when we were driving down the street, even though it was very blurry, some of the street signs were seen landmarks and shit like that so like moving forward i'm not vlogging until i get on the main road of town like i'm not vlogging in our neighborhood anymore and i'm not going to vlog on the in the front of the house yeah. unless i'm facing away from the streets um so if we do that i just have to be very careful about the things that we pick so if we're talking in the house or on the back porch game on mm-hmm. but if it's thought-provoking conversation i have to be very aware of where we are in the car when we're having those conversations but i've already made adjustments Good. My I, po- I posted through the window of 11. I have 11 episodes up, 11 wow. vlogs. Yep. Um, I posted that last night and I cut 15 minutes of conversation in the beginning of it, which was super relevant information it was the entire reason I was vlogging because I did it through the back streets on the way to the main road and oh, I was noticing landmarks. Yeah. So I'm glad <clears> that you did that. Just it's just I, I don't I know that people see us as like famous and shit. I don't. Right. And I know that there are those fans out there. I don't see that. You, the prime example of that, when Brandon was trying to explain like where we are, I don't, my brain does not compute. I don't see us as that. I We live a very normal life, but there are people out there who fucking cry when they see you in public. Like it, right, it's gotten yeah. to the point where like we have to start being a little more conscious. Oh, I've always been this way. Right. Well, I, I, I'm not because I don't give a fuck. Yeah. If somebody's feeling froggy, run up. Like it's the worst is going to happen is get my ass beat. Like, I'm not worried about no. that. Right. I know that's been my process the entire time. But now there's kids involved in a woman like. Right. It's a different scenario. So I have to dial that back and get on your mindset for your peace of mind, not mine. Oh, I appreciate that. So that's why the security got upgraded. That's why I got the, the giant monitor in there now. Like we went. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, I, if you pick your nose, I'm going to tell you that if your booger's dry or wet based off those security cameras, some motherfuckers are. But back back to the vlogging thing. Okay. Before you trail off, because I saw you look at something. You yeah. Smiled. What was it? I just we got. Uh, go ahead. You first. Oh, you looking at your you, new you purchases? First. You okay. first. Okay. So back to the vlogging thing. I th- the reason I was uncomfortable it wasn't because I'm talking to a camera. It's because I've never really processed my thoughts out loud the way I'm currently doing in the in the vlogs. Right. And I always have. Right. And you've been my soundboard the whole time. Now I, now I can do it to the camera too. So I can yeah. do it to you and then do it to the camera again. Yeah. And it doesn't feel redundant. <laughs> I'm just getting it like really right. solidifying my thoughts. And I love that all of your thoughts are, they're like solid life fucking thoughts. <laughs> and I feel like my vlogs are just <clears throat> whatever nonsense I'm fixated on at the moment and trying to process. It's, it's still just me trying yeah. to process though. It's the really? same thing. Sometimes they're fun. Like yeah. I, I went out there and made fun of your little plants this morning. That was, you did that, do was that. that was cute and fun for me. Um, you you know that last night we did something together for the first time in a while, and it wasn't a big deal, mm-hmm. but we got to go bottle hunting. Yeah, we did. And I, I vlogged that the the after effect of that because I got some. I'm excited to drink some of these. Yeah. Um, but it, it's nice to know that like our life has slowed down. It has. It really has. I finally feel like I can breathe. Yep. Yep. Not having to worry about lives. We, we got rid of the expedited emails altogether. Mm-hmm. We have a whole new format coming for Sundays, but we don't have the internet to handle it yet. Although I just bought a business class Starlink, which was not cheap. Oh my God, was that not cheap? I believe that. Um, But we'll get 25 megs up. It didn't say up to, it said 25 megs up and up to a terabyte down. So. Wow. I obviously it won't actually do a terabyte. I think that's probably like really high end testing that just got lucky and may or maybe I misread it. Um I did. Uh so it'll get twenty five megs up. It says not up to, it says twenty five megs up, which we need the, the megabytes up more than the download. Right. But it's guaranteed two hundred and fifty megabytes down. But we also have the T Mobile hotspot still. So even if the even if we only use the Starlink to stream and update. It's all that matters to me because mm-hmm. that's that's a huge part of what we're doing here. Um, if that works, I can hook my NAS server up 
and it should work properly if people are trying to download from my NAS server. So I, I don't know. That's that's neither here nor there, I guess. It's yeah. just, but that if I can get that set up and put it on my desk, I can have uh, Nikita come when he does the camera system and, and run a wire through the outside of the building so that we can run it right down into the living room and have that, that modem in the living room versus. That would be dope. Yep. So hopefully it gets here before he does the cameras, the rest of the camera systems. Cause when he comes in and upgrades a couple of the other cameras and I can have him do that all in one shot, that would be gangster. Um, Vegas is booked. Oh, I'm so excited about Vegas. Did you see the, I saw what you sent me. The things I sent you. Okay. I, um, I, so I, I, I have a couple of things. I know that we want to spend one day in the casino gambling, which was not on my radar at all. I've never done it. Okay. You know, I've done it <clears throat> illegally on a cruise ship. <laughs> Well, I mean, if it's on a cruise ship and you're in international waters, it's legal. Um, is it? Yeah. You have to, I think it's 32 miles. Huh. Once you go past 32 miles, you're international waters. You can gamble. Well, they didn't kick me out for a minor for being oh, a minor. Oh, you're okay. So that is illegal if you were a minor. Yeah. But, but they never caught me. They walked yeah. past me the whole time. They're like, oh, you're doing great. I'm like, I oh, know. Thank you. Yeah. They don't give a shit. Um, I, 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 you know what? I would imagine, I would imagine that when you're in international waters, it doesn't matter. That's free game. Yeah, I would wonder. I wonder if there's a legality to that. Well, I know. Well, we when we went on the cruise, I was in my late teens. I believe I was like 16 or 17. And we were in there as me, my mom and my sister. And she's younger than I am. And they made my mom leave with her because she was like she can't be in here. Oh, hmm. Was it the same time that you were gambling? Oh, yeah. We were sitting side by side. Oh, OK. And I was like, see you guys later. <laughs> I didn't get caught. <laughs> walked Did, away with some money that day i on, had like 500 bucks on the cruise ship because they're so big do you feel the rocking of the boat yes do you really even at that size yes um i love sleeping on cruise ships because of the because of the rocking motion yeah it is very soothing for me if i could purchase a bed that would rock me to sleep i would yeah yeah big old baby wild yep so i know that we're going to do a day of gambling yeah um which i'm i am kind of looking forward to <clears throat> because I enjoy playing poker a lot, <clears throat> which I'm going to come back to that. Um, but I, I'm more concerned about doing the, like, I am I, I know you want to go to the Grand Canyon. I do. And that's, I don't want a tourist Grand Canyon. Right. Like, I don't want to walk out on the little skywalk thing, and I don't want to just drive around it. If we're going to do the Grand Canyon, I'd like to fly in. Like, mm -hmm. I'd like to do make it, like, memorable. Um, if we have the option to, like, fly into the Grand Canyon and walk around the base on it, well, you, they'll let you fly in, mm -hmm. get out of the helicopter. Like if you take a helicopter in, you can fly in by helicopter and get out and walk around and do shit. But like you can't do hikes. Like you're just kind of limited to where you're able to walk around. It's all native. It's tribal land. Right. Like you can't just go do whatever the fuck you want out there. So. I'm okay with that. I, I just want to be able to like be down at the bottom and look up and. Yeah. It's well, all a very spiritual thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that, I, and I know that this, that's something that we have to figure out. I really want to do Death Valley. I want to go to Badwater Basin because that's mm -hmm. where I took my... Um, the, the photo. Right. And I would like to try to do that again. I would like to, because there were there were mistakes that I made in that first time that I went out there. Um, I would like to photo stack some out there and like really do the thing. I would like to, to just mm -hmm. try again. Because even though I got a dope photo, it wasn't... There's a lot of flaws. When I right. look at that picture, I'm like, damn, that's a dope picture. I'm like, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. You're nitpicking it, it. Right. So I want to get a second shot at that. There's Rhyolite Ghost Town out there. I want to do that. There's another ghost town that's not really a ghost town. It's private property that's across the street from what used to be a, a, a mine, like a gold mine or, or whatever okay. it was. And um, that place has been tried to be picked by American pickers a lot. Mm -hmm. they, they have like a downed airplane out there. They've got old cars. That's the place where I told you that Forrest tried to touch the cactus after I told him, after the guy was explicitly like, do not touch these cactuses. <clears throat> he was looking at it and was like, dude, I kind of want to touch it. I'm like, you're an idiot. Fucking go for it. Yeah, that's what I'm I said. I'm not taking you to the that's hospital. That's exactly what I said. I was like, I'll get you back to the casino and you can Uber to the hospital. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so there's places out there that I want to go. There's there's like, I wanted to see the Valley of Fire, but the, the Valley, Valley of Fire, Fire. it's a, yeah, there's, um, it's a national park. Okay. But the trail to the Valley of Fire Red Wave between July and October are closed because it's the hottest time of the year and that's when we'll be out there during that time frame so we won't be able to actually see the wave that's out there which is just a rock formation that's red and white that's curvy. And then there's there's other things that I want to do while we're out there. I'd like to pick up at least one show, but I think if we're going to do a show it either needs to be Blue Man Group or a Cirque du Soleil show. 
Um, I would prefer Cirque du Soleil. I, I, I would too. Blue Man Group is a lot of fun just because of the percussion aspect of it. I enjoy that. Mm-hmm. But I've seen Blue Man Group like six times when they were in Orlando. And the the Vegas show is not much different than the Orlando show was. And I don't think they change it. I think it's the same thing Over with now. minor tweaks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. So there's that. I, I definitely, I, I think that while we're out there too, I would like to try to do a Discord like dinner for the people who live within driving distance. We can meet them at one of the casinos and just do a dinner at one that of the... That would be dope. You know, because there's security there and like it, it's a... We'd be safe. Yeah. So I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot that could go into that. I reached out to my friend April that lives in California and told her that we we're going to be out there and we we're going to be out there and shit. And uh, I'm going to try to see if she wants to drive out to Vegas because that's where she's from mm-hmm. and be able to maybe meet up and have dinner with us. That would be kind of cool. Um, I don't know. I, I really want to use it as a base camp. Everything is within four hours. We could right. go to Sedona, Arizona if we wanted to. We could go to Antelope Canyon. There's so much that you can do. If you're just willing to drive my thing with Arizona, though, even though it's only a four hour drive, I really think that we should do Sedona as its own thing, Mm -hmm. because I think that once you get out there, you're going to really want to be out there for a little while. Okay. because there's a lot to see and there's a lot to do. Sedona is kind of a wild place. You're on a ley line. Oh, that's the place that you told me about with Bell Rock. Yeah. Yep. I agree. I think that should be its own. Yep. Own adventure. So what I was going to say earlier Mm. was two things. I was going to point out, like, I got some really nice whiskey bottles, and we found out last night that we can drink on a podcast as long as as we're not promoting underage drinking or... Irresponsible drinking. Irresponsible drinking. So if we're just talking about new bottles and a flavor we got, I think we can do that and not worry about getting uh, account violations or demonetized, which is a concern for us. The other thing that I I was wanted to talk about is I think that I'm going to get rid of the D&D table and get a poker table and like i keep looking i know we've talked about it a little bit i i really that room that that dnt excuse me very burpy the room that the dnd table is in has become a catch-all it has the dnd tables covered in t-shirts there's boxes on it there's computer parts on it like it's just become a shelf for me to throw shit on as i'm in a hurry doing things so um, my agenda over the next seven days is to get that table cleaned off and figure out if I'm going to keep it or get rid of it or take it apart and put it in the garage, mm-hmm. which I think is probably going to be my option because I can take the TV out of it. We can use that TV somewhere else and I can take the legs off of it and we can just store it in case I ever decide that I want the table again. I can literally just bring the table back in. That might be the move. I think so. Yeah. Um, I also need to go to Home Depot at some point because I want to replenish my toolbox. Because when we had my toolbox at Poppin, all of my tools are gone. My power tools and shit that I had locked in the storage, I still have all of that. But all my screwdrivers and wrenches and sockets and they're, it's just gone. Like yeah, just I, maintenance shit. I, I can't even find like I have. <coughs> I think I have two Phillips head screwdrivers in the house that are normal screwdrivers. The rest of them yes. are all micro tiny screwdrivers that I use for tech shit. Mm-hmm. But like all of my big screwdrivers are gone. All of my sets of everything is gone. I have no idea where any of that shit is. So I, I think that that needs to happen too, but not really here nor there or even relevant to anything. Yeah. Poker table would be pretty dope though. I was looking at a company online. I'm not going to say their name, but um, I priced out the table that I want mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's kidney bean shaped and there's a dealer slot for the dealer to sit in and you can add like a dealer tray and you can add a shuffler and you can add LED lights and you can add fucking USB ports. And I, Would that fit in that room? Yes. I, I measured. I spec'd it all out. Wait, wait which, which room? The D&D room? Or yeah. The, okay, because you pointed that way. Right. I forgot we're not in the podcasting okay. room. Okay. Um, I was like, are we giving up a podcast room now? <laughs> uh, yes, it will fit in the in the D&D room because okay. it's going to be roughly the same size as the table that's in there now. The um, spec'd out with the chairs, all said and done, is like, just under nine thousand dollars. I'm like, there's no fucking way I'm spending that on the poker table. Yeah, I'm like I, I could credit card, like American Express. Here you go, but I'm not. I'm not willing to do that. That's just, I don't know. I though I I, I found like I did a dummy version without the chairs and wear like three grand. Mm-hmm. And if I buy the chairs from room to room to go and just buy fancy chairs, I'm like four thousand dollars. So I'd be like less than half of what I want. Mm-hmm. But like, do I buy it once and buy it right? <laughs> so my two cents as your wife so you texted me yesterday and you were like i'm looking at poker tables and i was like oh word okay and you're like it's eight thousand dollars and i was like okay babe 
<laughs> and then I went on to whatever I was asking you. <laughs> and then we discussed it a little bit last night uh, on the way to the liquor store to look for bottles. By the by the nine thousand dollar table. Yeah. Is that just because you also want to have a gangster ass poker room? Yes. <laughs> it's also that I know you. Yeah. You're going to spend the three or four thousand dollars on this dummy down table. And in two months, you're going to be like, I should have bought the other one. I'm yeah. going to go buy the other one. Yeah. I so mean, now we're looking at twelve to thirteen thousand right. dollars on poker table. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to just wing this. Like, oh, I yeah. also would like to buy the poker table if we're going to do this and have it before we go to Vegas mm-hmm. so that we can get a couple games in because I haven't played poker in probably three years. Yeah, it's been a hot minute since I've played, and we've never played together. Right. So if we're going to go out there and we're going to do the thing for the day, I don't want to walk and be like, oh, that was such a cute experience. We're down $3,000. Yeah, <laughs> same, same. I want to walk out of there like a badass power couple. I want to whip out some sunshades out there playing like, <laughs> uh, my mind went to Top Gun. I was like, no, that's not that's not what we need in that moment. Maybe like Bruno Mars. Right. And it's slow mo and like you're carrying the cash of the bag of cash over your shoulder. (laughs) And I have like a faux mink coat on that evaporated out of nowhere and it's white. And we're leaving a casino with our money that evaporates out of nowhere. Yeah. Evaporates out of nowhere. Appears out of nowhere. Appears out of nowhere. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was just going to come to you or just disappear. Um, What does it mean when it just comes? It materializes. Materializes. Okay materializing yeah, evaporates would be that's what I meant. dematerializing okay. <laughs> that's what i want i want that moment yeah so that's funny yeah yeah somebody saw me make a video in here the other day and they were like you got a really good taste in whiskey <laughs> <laughs> how'd that make you feel it felt pretty good i, like I-, I want to do a whiskey room tour on one of the podcasts i think i just yeah. don't want to have to i guess i could do it after we record it and just splice it in you could. But I, I, I want to do that when we get to talking about some of it. Yeah. I don't know. I would have a lot of fun doing a, like, just a taste test with you. Like, you maybe get six or ten of your least favorite and most favorite, right? Like, least to most. And we just go down the line and I say what I think of it. And then you tell me, well, actually, this is like a $500 bottle that yeah. you just shit on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's some of those on the shelf. I'm sure that you would actually shit on them. There's, there, yeah. I want you to drink that Ardbeg up there. Ardbeg? It's scotch. Scotch. It's not a very expensive bottle. That bottle is less than 100 bucks. Yeah. I, I full disclosure, I don't like scotch no. at all. I bought that solely so that when people are like, I like scotch, I can give them the worst tasting scotch on the planet. Shit tastes like dirty gym shoe. It's bad. <laughs> We're going to have so much fun with those. Yeah, I've had one person that I've given that to go, oh, it's not bad. I'm like, what? <laughs> We're not doing anything tomorrow. Do you want to record that? Uh, Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, you'll be gone most of the day tomorrow. Right, Mark. but we're not doing the live tomorrow. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Unless you had like a date planned or something. I mean, I could have a date planned. We don't have to go live tomorrow night. Right. Unless they fix the internet between now and then. Mm-hmm. Um, Speaking of tomorrow nights, Sundays, we're changing our format away from the expedited emails, and we're going to start talking about current topics. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. Non-political, non-yeah, non-political shit, because that seems to be what everybody wants to discuss, and I don't want to get into that. It's a headache. It is. It's Mm -hmm. nonsense. I'm not willing to... It's a headache. I'm good. So we're going to start doing fun topics on Sunday night. And AJ is going to be on the podcast long distance from his house on a microphone, uh, running through discord, telling us things like, okay, this is the article. He's going to read it. We're going to pause, talk to him, talk to us, have the discussion. And then he's going to keep reading and we're going to have that format and see how that works out for a couple episodes. Is he going to be heard by the viewers? Mm -hmm. This is going to be so. Yep. It'll be like he's here, but we won't have Um, cameras on. I've been watching a lot of H3 recently. I don't know what that is. It is um, Ethan Klein and his wife, Sam, I believe her name is. They have people who are on video chat doing the same thing. Right. I just think that's so cool. It's so neat. Like we were so worried about having people in studio. Right. Well, I mean, that's how we did our first interview. Yeah. I I don't know. The issue with the the webcam shit is that the quality of them versus the quality of us Mm -hmm. always never looks the same. Like I, I I want that... I want it to look good. 
Uh, Brandon and his wife, Kayla, are coming back next weekend. Jeff Graham and Angie have agreed to come back. Nikita agreed to come in, oh, which, dope. believe it or not, even though he's a young man, has had a very interesting life. Dude has done a lot. He just got back from a, a, a two-week trip to Alaska where he was out fishing and, like, doing the Alaska thing. And yeah, Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's he's done a lot. I've known him since he was 16 years old, so... It, it's he's yeah he's a kid to me he right. will always be a kid to me but he's he's a young man now who's doing the life thing i bet it's super dope to see him go from being a teenager to actually like a young man doing the thing living a life uh yeah he's been one of those kids who's always had his shit together yeah like he's never been a fucker like he's just done the life thing and he's he's just doing it mm-hmm. he, he was an airplane steward for a while like he went and did like whatever the classes is and flew and did that that life for a little bit. Okay. And yeah, lived in Washington and Oregon and like yeah, he's kind of been all over the place. It's pretty wild to me. I'm going to get an energy drink because I'm empty and then we should jump into those update emails. Okay. Because that was the thing that we said we were going to be doing different today. We are going to be reading e- up um, emails. Right. But I put a call <laughs> to action on my TikTok saying if you guys have been helped by us or we have read one of your emails on the podcast, we would like a follow up. Let us know what we've done and how we've helped so that we can do the thing. So you know what else I was just thinking about? Hmm. Because we're doing the the amount of unboxings that we're doing and um, if we're going to be doing the taste test stuff, mm-hmm. we may have to look into get like a, a rolling table. Okay. So that we can sit behind the table and record in front of us with whatever we have in front of us. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to get another C-stand so that we could do a top-down shot. So if we're opening packages, we can just open the box and everything is right there. Where would we set that up at? Yeah, well, if we got a folding table on wheels, we could just unfold the table okay, and move it around. Okay, folding table on wheels. That, I didn't hear the folding part. Did you I, say I, that? I didn't. I just said a rolling okay. table so that we could roll it out. Or, I mean, in reality, we have room to put shit places. Mm-hmm. Just, you know. Right. Um. It's the hassle of moving cameras and setting things up and well moving moving <laughs> tables and chairs is easy. Moving all of this is not. Right. I would rather move that couch. Yeah. Than move the cameras and wiring and all that shit. I'd stand that bitch up, put it on furniture dolly and just roll it into the closet. Mm-hmm. It's easy. Or, right. or just roll it right into the kitchen while we're recording and just put it right back. Right. This is break down, move, right. make sure I don't hit anything. Right. Set and back just up. doing it three or four different times. Run the wiring, level yeah. everything back out, make sure the lighting is right. Change the exposure. I'd rather move a <clears throat> couch. Yeah. Um, we also have the ability because we're not recording in another room anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. And part of the reason is everything we just said. Right. Well, it is. But it's also because this is a lot more fun. This room is is the nicest room in the house. It is. So it's one of those things that we could start moving things out of that room and redo that room for the third time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Do you want to know something? I I think this might make you happy. Okay. So the other night I was tending to my plants. The lights were on. I was just checking on everything, misting them, hydrating them and whatnot. And I was peeking through the plants and I was seeing the lights backlighting your whiskey. Mm. And like I stepped out from my plants and I stood behind the couch and I took a picture of the room. I'm going to start getting emotional. And like I I was just thinking it's so dope to be a part of all of this with you. Yeah. Yeah. We're we're evolving. We're changing everything. We're changing the house. Like we we have reached out to the people that own property. Like we're trying to expand a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Doing things in the house is just the cheaper end of all of it. You right. know what I mean? But it is dope to be able to do all of this. Knowing that this is a room that you've always wanted mm-hmm. and have always justified not doing. And now that you have it and you're in love with it and you actually want to start collecting again, it's yeah. nice to see you growing into your passion again. Yeah. It's nice to be able to have the time to do those things. Because yeah. I've just been working for the last eight months. All right, so that you don't get emotional and we don't waste a whole lot of extra time, let's let's jump into some of these updates. I'm curious to see <clears throat> how these plan out play out. <clears throat> this should be this should be a feel good episode. From what we've been told, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So this says, "Hello, Chris and Peaches. I sent one email before sharing a few pictures I took. You responded, and it made my day." In my first email, I said a short thank you and promised a longer follow-up email. And now that I have caught up on all the episodes of the shows, I feel like I'm finally ready to type this out and send it off. I've tried to think of how to word everything I want to share, but I will get sidetracked in my head, so I'm going to try and type this out in sections. 
our background, I, 31 female, met and fell in love with my husband, 38, when I was 22. We met in 2016 and got married in 2019. We do not have kids and do not plan on having kids. Hell yeah. We both admit <laughs> to being too selfish with our time. Own that shit. That's okay. Yep. I would rather you say, look, I'm selfish with my time and that child is not going to be loved properly by me. Yep. I would rather you say I'm not going to fucking have kids versus having a child and neglecting that child. Yep. So say it with your chest. If you don't want kids, don't have kids. Fuck anybody else who has an issue with that. Yep. I work full time as a janitor and my husband is a disabled vet. We both came from a colorful upbringing. I raised myself. That is the best way I feel explains my past without going into details of abuse. I've had a lot of therapy and I have done a lot of internal work to, to through the trauma. I have done a lot of internal work to through the trauma and coping mechanism. Typo. Okay. I want to make sure it's not me fucking up words in the sentence. Nope. Okay. Typo. My husband probably, was, probably should have said to work through the trauma. But. Okay. To work. <laughs> okay. My husband was raised by an absolute angel of a woman. His mom did everything by herself and was able to give him a steady start to his life and was able and was always just one call away. In the seven years we have been together, we have been able to help each other grow to the best version of ourselves. Learning each other's communication styles and love language was a little rocky at first, but we approached two years together and we got a hang of it. And yelling matches turn into three hour long, deep conversations that end with us saying thank you and feeling heard. That's a big deal. It is a big deal. After our disruptions, it always ends with an I'm a sorry and mm -hmm. thank you for having that conversation with me. Yep. Yep. I will stand by. I would rather go through a month long disruption than just living life as if everything's okay and our marriage is falling apart. Right. Yeah. But with communication, you don't have to go through a month long. That's true. The month long could be just trying to figure out how to find the words for things mm -hmm. or something is discussed and it brings up like a new problem and like, okay, well, we didn't recognize this was an issue, but now let's address that. Whatever. We quickly become the couple our friends told us they wanted to be. And to this day, we will not understand how other couples can be in loveless relationships and marriages. <laughs> Welcome to our world. Right. We focus on our marriage and save oh, and save lives. We, yeah. we focus on our marriage and lives around our home being a place of peace and being home to each other. Ooh, what wrecked our world. I am honestly not sure how to word the transition, so I will just dive in. Our lives were at our peaks. We were both working the same job, just different crews, so we got to spend almost all of our time together, and it was absolutely amazing. We had daily workouts and meal prepping that we did together. And in the middle of May of 2021, our whole world stopped. My husband's mom called and within two days, we packed our car and drove from North Idaho to North California. His grandfather passed away and his mom was diagnosed with cancer. By the end of the week that we got to his mom's, we found that he would be staying with her for the next year to help her through chemo, radiation and surgery. I would be going back home to hold the fort to hold down the fort while he did what he had to do. I know, Chris, you hate long-distance relationships, but I know you can appreciate what we decided to do. Mm -hmm. We both knew it was only temporary. I'm, I'm pause you. Okay. This is not a long-distance relationship. No, this isn't. This is a marriage doing what you have to do for your family. Mm -hmm. This is teamwork. Yep. This is what it looks like to say, I fucking do and mean it. Mm -hmm. it it's not the same thing to me. I agree with that. I think a long distance relationship is people who start dating and they live in other states. You know what I mean? Like when you've yeah. lived with somebody for a while and you've done the life thing and you're married and you own shit together and then things pull you apart like a military deployment or a fucking prison stint or a death or cancer. It's right. not the same thing to me. You've yeah. established that life. Right. You're right. That's totally different. Different from we met on Snapchat and she lives 800 miles away. Right. Definitely and so different. you're right, emailer. I do appreciate that shit. Mm -hmm. Run that motherfucker. Like, live that life. Yeah. Did that make it hurt any less? Absolutely not. But sometimes in life, there is nothing you can do about the hurt. During the year he was gone, I went to visit him three times. A two-week visit every three months-ish. We talked, texted, and video chatted as much as we could bring that year. As much as we could during that year. 
In April of 2022, he asked me to come help him. At that point, we knew his mom would not make it and he needed me. To say the least, on my birthday, I dropped my dog off with my sister and made the solo drive one last time. His mom passed in September and we were both able to finally go home together for good in November. There is a lot I am leaving out in all of this and I have faith in how you two communicate to fill in the blanks. To ugh, blanks. Y'all's rabbit trails are usually spot on. <laughs> I cannot imagine that drive home. Yeah. Because it's that we're reunited again as husband and wife. Like, I'm glad you're coming home. Just lost your fucking mom. Yep. That's the crutch. That's rough. Yeah. What does that say about his ability to be vulnerable and trust in um, leaning on her when he needed her most? Right. To be able to be like, all right, I need you to come down here. Like, I need you here. And her willingness willingness to do so with no... Mm -hmm battle about it there's the dog i have work right who's gonna take care of the house i have plants yeah it was i dropped the dog off and i was there yeah that's what it looks like to be somebody's priority it does how you both helped during the year my husband was gone i had to harden myself my husband has always been my armor outside of marrying a marine my husband has always been my armor upside of marrying a marine i guess yep Got to protect her. Yeah. So when we got home, I had to let myself be soft again. And when all of the hurt we went through while in California, it was damn near impossible to be soft and allow him to resume his role in an hour home. All of my resolved coping mechanisms were holding strong, mainly hyper independence. And y'all, I was toxic and didn't know how to let go again. I am glad that your husband has stayed by your side through you having to re-unlearn all of your toxic coping mechanisms. Going from being in a relationship, well, you, you're still, you were still in the relationship, having that constant, my man's got me, like, I know he's at home, he's one phone call away, he'll be here in 15 minutes, that's gone. That if somebody breaks in at night, <clears throat> my husband's the first offense is gone. And it's a year of that. So in that year reacclimating to all I have is myself, all I have is myself to defend. It's a lot of emotions. It's a lot of, I can't be mad at him. It's a lot of, this is what life has to be right now. I have to support him. I have to fight the negative feelings I could be feeling towards him. A lot of emotion going on there. And when someone in such a, when someone is in such an, emotional turmoil of fighting their own negative thoughts towards the person that it could be building towards that unconscious resentment can start to build. And I don't know if that's what she's alluding to happened in California, that there was a, a wrongful, like taking anger out on, like, I understand this is not your fault, but I'm going to make you feel like it's your fault. Yeah. <clears throat> Before you move on that, that, um, We've all had to carry something that's heavy. Yeah. Right. At some point, you got to set that shit down. Mm -hmm. And if you're like, no, I got it. And you hold on for a little bit longer. And you're like, no, I got it. And you hold on for a little bit longer. And you find yourself in a position that's super fucking uncomfortable and you're holding on to something or you're carrying something. Mm -hmm. You look at it, people who do rucks, <clears throat> put a 50 pound backpack on and walk 10 miles. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a moment where like all you want to do is take that fucking bag off. And you're like, I just got to get to, to, to point X mm -hmm. and then I'm done. I don't have to put this bitch back on again. That's that living independent toxic you got to take that fucking backpack off yeah. you got to set that shit down and allow yeah. somebody else to help you fucking carry it holding on to that when you have somebody that's much stronger than you that can take that burden i.e your mm -hmm. marine like why the fuck are you carrying that any right. further than you need to yeah another crazy thing to think about when you push yourself past the point of okay i should have put this down an hour ago it becomes more painful to put it down. Yeah. It's easier to hold it because moving from that position or, you know, squatting down and moving your arms to go and put it down, it's more painful than just holding it. Yeah. Crazy. All my resolved. Oh, I read that. <clears throat> One night mindlessly thumbing TikTok, I saw peaches boot video and it triggered me 
I hearted the video and attempted to, comp to compartmentalize the trigger feeling like I had been since May of 2021, but it didn't work. Curious if this was before or after she was already following us. That's a good question. A week later, while at work, I started a podcast on Spotify and made a deal with myself. Made a goal of listening to every day you guys posted and use it to work through everything and get back to who I am, not who I had to be. Okay, so that was before. So she liked a video that triggered her. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is. That could be like that fuck you energy. Like, you didn't just hurt my feelings. I'm going to like it anyway. Yeah. Double tap. Mm. You didn't just bother me. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be. Oh, damn, this bothered me. All right. I'll see what you're about. I'll give you that like. Yeah. <laughs> I do that sometimes. Both of them, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are times where I'm like, you didn't just bother me. I'm going to give you the like anyway, because I'm not bothered right now. And of course, I sit down. I'm like, OK, you are. Why are you bothered? And I right. end up figuring out why I'm bothered. They deserve the like anyway, because you triggered that. Yeah. So thank you. I'll admit, sometimes I'm a salty pretzel. <laughs> I started the show in May of this year, and I am currently in all the episodes and have had a few nights where me and the hubby sit and watch the YouTube channel together. Love that. While listening to you two, I've been able to return to my soft side. I've been able to return to listening and speaking to my husband how he needs instead of how I want to. Yes, I have returned to taking his boots off and has started shampooing and conditioning my hair in the shower. Oh, and he has started shampooing and conditioning my hair in the shower. We both have been working on feeling everything we pushed aside. We have both had to stop and take a minute to verbalize how we need to relearn how to live in our home again. And we are learning every day that it's okay to relearn basic things and that we to relearn basic things that we used to not have to think about. Our peace is slowly coming back and my husband was able to get full disability over the year in California. So a lot of things in our lives are changing and improving. Love that. There's an acclimation process that happens when people come home. I was about to say, she's right in saying that they're relearning living together. Yep. Yep. And it doesn't matter how they're coming home. Mm -hmm. Obviously, different stresses are going to factor in the level of acclimation that has to happen, but there's always a relearning period. Right. And you have to expect that. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people expect things to just go back to the way they were, and things can't go back to the way they were. They can only go forward. Things so. can evolve from the way they were. Right. Yep. People get so hung up on the, I missed you, you're back home. Let's just live life again. Right. They have to remember, like in this situation, he just lived his this whole past year watching this fierce woman become a shell of herself. Yep. And he had to push his feelings aside of I'm watching my mom die to I have to make her comfortable. I have to put on this brave face as her son and show her that I'm not as affected by this as I am. And she knows right. his mom was aware of how hurting of how hurt he was. What a terrible situation to be in. So now he has to process that whole year on top of process processing. I missed my wife. And now we have all of these issues. Right. So and then, much. And then everything that she was going through on the other side of that. Right. Everything that she was going through of, I can't be mad at him. I can't have this anger towards him. I have to. It is always so easy to channel all of your frustrations to the person that you see every single day. Right. Or the person that you've been with for the past 20 years. Yep. They will always catch the brunt of everything. Right. So reeling that in and saying, this is not how I want to be with my husband. I know I can be this way. I'm choosing not to be this way because I don't like the way that I am feeling towards him is a hard thing to do on top of pushing back that little gremlin in the mind of saying, no, fuck him. This is his fault. He left. He made the choice to stay out there. And I'm assuming all of these things. She didn't say she right. felt this way. This is a thought process that I could possibly have to battle if this situation arises. Knowing myself and my toxic past and the things that I saw and experienced growing up and still see, I am not my thoughts myself that constantly i'm not my thoughts i i just went down a rabbit hole too okay so you have um we so we've established that your perception of your world is your reality the things you pay attention to are your existence correct so 
you expect people to feel the way you feel. You expect them to see things the way that you see them. You expect people to have that same mindset because mm-hmm. that is your reality. So for you, that's normal. Right. And when you have that normalcy, normalcy, you think that that's mm-hmm. the way it is for everyone else, right? Mm-hmm. So it's very easy for us to lay our burdens on the people that we love the most because we know what they're capable of handling because they've been living it with us. Right. right. So like you think that their perception is the same as yours because you two have become one and you've lived for 10 years or 20 years or five years together mm-hmm. and you expect your person to have the same reality that same you life experience. Right. Yeah. Same reality that you have. So if that's the case, it's very normal for us to just be like, well, I'm hurting. They have to hurt. And that could be why people fucking feel the need to jab at their person. Yeah. Yeah. This when is I'm- this is so much more fun. I'm enjoying this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is nice. Um, when I was in my late teens, I very distinctly remember an argument that I was having with don't date people you work with guys. Yeah. <laughs> don't. I was a waitress at a restaurant and he was a line cook and the relationship should have never happened. Oh God. I was such a mess when I was in my late teens. <laughs> We got into a massive argument because I was hurt that he was lying to me about the fact that he was smoking. You know, I, I can't stand being with a smoker. Yeah. The smell, the stench, the, the smell never goes away on the breath. Even if you're chewing gum, your clothes smell like that. Your house smells like that. I'm good. And when I found out that he was lying to me about smoking, I was so hurt and pissed off and I couldn't understand why he didn't understand why I was so hurt and pissed off. I was like, okay, well, I'm ha- now I'm hurt. You're going to fucking be hurt. And now I'm throwing all of these things at the you to hurt your feelings about how you're a bad boyfriend, about how you don't take care of me. Yeah, it, it is not a good fucking situation. <laughs> that mindset is so bad to have. Yeah, it's toxic, toxic behavior. Now for the thank you. What you two have created is life changing. And thank you does not convey the appreciation we both have for you two. The strength you both have to share who you are with the world is amazing and inspiring. Since starting the show, we have gotten back on our supplements, meal prep- meal prepping, and slowly getting back into the gym. Love that. Me too. Blood work is next, guys. Mm-hmm. And go to matrixhormones.com and fill out that new patient form to be better. Yes, they have to be better as an option. Yeah, as on the drop down. $200 off. Yep, $200. $200 off. How does that make you feel? Knowing that our our podcast is on a drop down menu for a website for people that we've referred. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting ready to get my word done, my word, your blood work. blood work done on Tuesday. Yep. So excited about that. I'm going to get back into the gym after that and I'm getting all my supplements and whatnot. Very, very excited. Yeah. It goes to show too that we really believe in the company. It does. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like that was, there was a lot of back and forth trying to get all this set up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Please keep doing what you guys are doing. And if you guys ever want a vacation, we would love for you guys to come on over. There are colors and places over here in North Idaho that I feel you both would love to photograph and experience. Yeah, I mean, you're, North Idaho puts you near Wyoming and Montana. I, I actually have a photo from Idaho. When, yeah. we drove, when I drove to Yellowstone, I had to go around and, and mm-hmm. there was a, a place yeah. that I pulled off on the side of the road, mm-hmm. jumped out of my car and ran behind somebody's house to take a picture. Zero fucks given. This dope photo is hanging up in the house. I would do that too. Yeah. Yellowstone is another thing that's on my bucket list. Yeah, we'll definitely yeah. be doing that. Mount Fuji is on my bucket list. In Japan. Where's that? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great I, Wall of China is on my bucket list. I want to do uh, Mount Washington in Maine. Okay. Is it Maine? I believe it's Maine. Yep. I, I, I just want to go to the top where the, um, um, the terminus is of the Appalachian Trail. Okay. So I'm down for that. I know this is a long email and I hope I didn't go off on random side quests too much. Thank you both so much. And if y'all want more details or anything, I would love to send another email. I mean, you can send another email. That was very pleasant to read. That was very nice to read. What are we at right now? Uh, An hour. You want to keep going? Yeah, let's do another one. See how we feel after that. See if we're going to keep going. I, I'm I'm not I'm I know that there are people who really enjoy our longer format podcasts. Mm-hmm. I, I think that we were so concerned about growth that we pushed and pushed and pushed, 
and try to meet all of the needs that everyone had. And I think in doing so, we kind of lost us. Right. Because we stopped allowing ourselves the free time to do shit. And like, you know, to force a three hour podcast is, is not an easy thing to do, especially when you're reading horrible fucking emails. Yeah. So. So South Park. I love South Park. I love watching South Park. It's such a fun show for me to watch. The creators of that show said if they could, they would go back and delete seasons one to four and just remove all of it. And that's kind of how I'm feeling about like the last few months podcast that we've aired. Yeah. Yep. Just because I feel like, like you said, it's just content to put out content. I don't feel that it's content to put out content. It's just so negative. Yeah. Because it was people trauma dumping. Right. People using us as their therapists. That's not what we do. Like we want to help people that have like Mm -hmm. issues in their relationship, not people who have unresolved childhood trauma. Right. Like, so we're working on it. It's growing pains. Those guys should be grateful for those first four seasons because if it wasn't for those first four seasons, they wouldn't have a show. Right. I don't regret doing any of that. And and my want to delete it is because I'm, that's not who we are. Like, I don't want to be viewed as a negative, hateful person. Yeah. But... I'm also concerned like people are going to start watching the podcast and then come across that little rough patch and be like, I'm not going to watch them anymore. And they're going to miss out on all this new, amazing content that we're now putting out because. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that'll happen. No. Okay. Nope. I think that there will be people that will see that and be like, yeah, this just isn't for me. But if they watch that entirety, Mm -hmm. we're going to show back up. Yeah. So. You just want to get into the next one? Sure. All right. So I'm not going to read any names on the podcast. Um, this is from a 32 year old female who is married to a 31 year old male. I would like to give a little background on myself before I get into how you've helped me and my husband. Oh, before you've helped me help my husband. Oh, I pre I was previously married several years back and that relationship left deep scars. While going to therapy for that. My older brother passed away in December of 2021. Four months after the passing of my brother, I met my husband I knew we would be married on our first date, as crazy as that sounds. Does it sound crazy? It might sound crazy to other people who've never experienced that, but for people who have had that moment, you know, you know. If you know, you know. I'm going to say it. Uh, (laughs) There there was a sense of, I don't know, there still is a a, a sense of shame tied to this in me. I'm going to say it anyway. The first time that I met you... Yeah. Yeah. I was like, this fucker's going to be mine. <laughs> That's funny. It's wild to think about, especially because of how big of a dick I was the first time. We you met. really were a massive dick. And I was like, ooh, that's okay. <laughs> and I watched and I waited. Planets ever aligned. And I saw my opportunity and I took it. Yeah. I'm a woman who knows what she wants in life. Should put that into your woman thing. Despite all my trauma and heartbreak, this man picked up the shattered pieces of my heart and soul and basically loved me back to life. While he and I had been mostly single throughout our 20s, minus my brief marriage, I had learned to love myself through my therapy work. My husband was constantly talking down on himself and his looks since before I knew him. Since being with him and watching y'all's content, I have started to continuously shower him in praises, appreciation, and compliments, showing him that he is deserving of love and appreciation. Slowly, he has begun to stop talking down on himself and actually started to believe me. This man brought me through my own darkness, darkness, which was not his burden to bear, but he did it anyway. He is truly a blessing. Thank you for the content you both do, and please keep it up. Much love. It's crazy to think that people don't recognize the power of their words to their partner until they start implementing it. Yeah. It's crazy that we don't recognize the words, like the power of our own words. Mm-hmm. I, I am a firm believer that, and, and you guys can take this however you want to take it, but in Genesis it said, God spoke it and then it was. Right. And then it says that we are made in God's image. And if that's the case, we have fucking power in our words. Mm-hmm. You speak shit into existence. I believe that. Full chest. I mean, I'm married to you. Yeah. <laughs> One of my biggest flexes in life, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Is me? Being married to you, yeah. Having your last name being your wife, making you happy and knowing that you're authentically, genuinely happy and at peace. And, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hands down. 
when I meet God, be like, did you see that down here? See what I did? <laughs> you need to high five him we for putting that. you in your in my, in a, oh in a, yeah yeah no and be like, look what I did with what you gave me. There you go. Did I make you proud? Damn, you and God are the only people I want to hear say that. I, make you proud. <laughs> I think I'm doing right. I think I'm making you guys happy. Yeah, we are definitely doing the thing. Definitely, definitely doing the thing. Why do I want to cry? Because that's what you do. It's your forte. It doesn't stop. It just, it just goes. How bad? How wild would it be if your blood work comes back and your estrogen is high, and that's why you cry the way you do? <laughs> I believe there is a lot wrong with me, <laughs> hormonal <laughs> wise. I was going through and answering the questions on the panel for Matrix, and I was like, "Oh, I don't think these should all be a three. Like just reading these sentences about my thyroid just doesn't sound right." Yeah, and I was like, "Ooh, how could I have not thought about this before?" Yeah, moved on to the testosterone questions, and I was like, "Oh, makes sense on why I shave my face." Was it like a high thing or a low thing? I think my I testosterone might be high. Yeah. One of the questions was um, like excessive facial hair. I can grow the hair. I just can't grow the beard, which is kind of disappointing for me. It, it's not disappointing. Uh, can we move on? Because that makes me uncomfortable. Every time you're like, I would look really good with facial hair. I'm like, stop it. No, the fuck you wouldn't. No, no, no. I don't know why you have this obsession with wanting a beard. <laughs> because I think I look really good with it. <laughs> and I said this before and I would say it again. I'm going to say it again. If I had an alternate life and I was capable of growing the full beard, I was a whole nother being like, I don't know. My name's Jessica or something. It's me. Jessica. Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> In here. <laughs> Oh my god, I could I want to reenact that scene from Hot Chicks. Yeah. I could do it. I love that I'm really just clawing my way out the depths of my depression because all of the skits and funny things are coming to me now. Yeah. And I love that you're wanting to be like a camera guy. <laughs> you want to make some magic? <laughs> <laughs> Only skits.com. <laughs> Stop it. Do you know how many people we could clown? We started an OF, guys, and they log on, and the first thing it's me doing an Ace Ventura impression. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could do that. We could fucking do that. And all of the perverts that want to see us doing the deed would, would pay for that to see that only exclusive content, oh. and it's you you kicking packages down a hallway dressed as H. Ventura, or, or, or like painting as Bob Ross. Right. <laughs> painting as Bob Ross. Holy shit. Oh, man. We should, we should start that for Patreon to see if people actually enjoy that stupid content. Okay. You get to live your life as a comedian. I have so much homework to do. But, no, you don't. I you do. You just wing it. No, like I need to watch Ace Ventura. I oh, yeah, it. we can do that. Can we do that tonight? Uh, Maybe. I want to do it tonight. Okay. I'm going to take some concentrate, take notes. Okay. I'm going to put it on the shirt so I'm really feeling it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to look over and see me mimicking his facial style, like facial expressions and shit. I'm going to look at you and try to mimic what he just said. And if you laugh, I know I nailed it. You're my guinea pig. I'm going to have to set up a vlogging camera. That's a good idea. Starting over. So next email, guys. I have actively... I have been actively listening to your podcast for several months now, as well as keeping up with your TikToks. I must say I have enjoyed every minute of it. While at times self-reflection was not easy, it was necessary to save my marriage. That's why I don't want to delete those other those those other podcasts. Because she's been listening for the last few months. She's been listening through that. Right. People are getting value from it. That harsh reality is something that a lot of people don't get in life. Yeah. I just, I'm not afraid to be the person to say it. Neither right. are you. Like I, I'm, I'm really not. I will be that bitch. You want to call me a see you next Tuesday? I'll wear that shit with pride. Mm -hmm. You want to say my, I can be your contact name, whatever. I think I, I would never suggest deleting that content or privating that content, removing it from the masses. I just, looking back on that time period of those episodes, 
I don't like the way I felt. Right. I don't either. Recording it. I don't either. And looking back on that time frame, I get very emotional. Um, it definitely was a key component in the depression I was experiencing. Yep. And you're right. There is there is a lot of value there and people are still taking something away from it. Can you pinpoint where the final like, I don't want to do this anymore was? Because I know where mine was. It was on a live stream. Yes. It was, I have an STD and I'm with a woman I don't see a future That's with. That's the exact same fucking email where he was cheating on. on and I'm cheating on yep, her. That was the same one. That was for me. I was like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. Right. I, I don't have sympathy. Yep. You have, a, you have a past of cheating on women. You dance around the fact of admitting that you cheated on women. And you want the pity me party that you got an STD because someone didn't disclose to you that it had an STD while you are also running amok doing foul shit. Yep. You yep. get the energy you put out into the universe. It will not always come back to you the way you're putting it out, but it will find your ass. Yep. I think it was a, uh, I think it was a double stacked for me because I hadn't gotten over episode 30.5. Okay. The, I haven't bathed my kid in three fucking days to prove a point. And then that, that was email also, was like a week later. Yeah. And I was like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with people? I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, that the not bathing the infant for three days yep. to prove a point to her husband while simultaneously having dirty countertops so much so to the point of acknowledging it that they're dirty while complaining that my husband says I never clean the house. Yep. I, you're right. I'm sorry. Yep. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, it is. It is what it is. I just if, I think it's wild that we both have that same like this is the moment because it had been building. Yes. And like we would have enough time off to like get it to it, decompress a little bit and have just enough in the tank to do it again. And then we were at zero all over again. It is um, the definition of insanity. Yep. We were doing the definition of insanity. Mm -hmm. We had like you were saying, we had that cool off period. And it went right back into it. Right. Our, our, our podcast didn't start off like that. No, it didn't. Do you, you know what we should do? We should go back. We should reach out to that chick who emailed us the, the first, first the first email and just be like, hey, how's your marriage doing? You we know, should do that when we're done. I talked to her in the comments. Do you? She's still Every on our shit. Every once in a while, yeah. We should reach out to her. Yeah. We should reach out to her and see how our marriage is doing. Every once in a while, I think about her. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Because that's why all this is happening. That solidified and gave me the confidence yeah. in what we were doing to want to push forward. That was the email. When we first started this, there <clears> was a lot of doubt in me. Me too. Of putting herself on a stage like this mm -hmm. and opening herself open to criticisms. And it's a lot. Yep. Our lives have changed the way that I view society and humanity has changed. Being put in the spotlight like this and having eyes on you. And it's not just eyes, it's thoughts and yeah. opinions. Yep. I'm seeing humanity in a whole new light, a lot of negative shit. And I'm also seeing a lot more positivity than I did before. You know what I'm seeing in a lot of this is that people have the ability to change if they yes. simply believe that they can change. It's the belief in their self. Yep. As soon as they realize the accountability aspect of everything. Yeah. Like you see it. I mean, that's what we're seeing. People taking accountability in the moment and being like, yo, you fucking yeah. triggered me. I realized I was a fucking problem and I changed my marriage is dope as shit because of it. Yeah. Did you see, did you see the, the post in discord the other day? I, I'm, uh, maybe specific. it wasn't discord it, it may not have been discord it, uh we were either emailed or we were tagged in something that was a fire pit with a stack of papers in it i saw that yep yep and they're yeah, like this is my divorce us. papers <coughs> which is crazy to me because they joined patreon they've been watching content and the whole time those divorce papers have been sitting intact in their house as an option yeah made and a choice in that moment, they were like, no, not anymore. And they burned those papers together as a choice. Mm -hmm. I'm getting emotional over again. Putting us in that position, we would have to be pretty far fucking gone. Yeah. Yep. And to have that reconnection of we're going to do it again. It's a big deal. Yep. Yeah. Do you hear how my voice sounds when I start crying? Yeah. That's why I take a moment because I don't like that. This is how I sound when I cry. And I... It's the, that was not actually how it sounded, but that's how it sounds to me. It's not, but be glad that it's you that can talk through crying and not me because I become Will Ferrell in a, a glass case of emotion when I start crying and try yeah. to talk. It's bad. <laughs> I, I don't under, I didn't understand a one word you said. Ross, are you 
you okay? Run. <laughs> I have to suppress that until that cry feeling goes away, and then I can talk until it comes back, and I got to suppress it again. This has taken a lot of practice. Yeah. And I had a moment the other day where I was very proud of myself. Um, I met with somebody who I have not met with in over a decade. I think you should save that. I think you should save that entire story for Patreon because there's a lot of value in that. Okay. A lot. And you need to do an in-depth oh, man. conversation of that. Okay. Because that'll help a lot of people. That, that'll help a lot of fucking people because we've talked about it in emails, but to have it be your personal experience, we should just Patreon content that. Okay. I think you should just hold it. I think we should just move on to the next email. That needs that okay. needs to be a full episode, baby. Okay. So next email. Oh, we're still on an email. Oh. <laughs> Side railing. <laughs> wow. We were two sentences in. <laughs> At, maybe maybe that's why that last email felt so short. Because we're still in it. And this is what people have missed. Yeah. I'm having fun with I, you. I am too. I, I'm I am having too. fun with the emails and the content and the conversation. Yep. This isn't a, I don't know, how would I respond to my husband smacking my eight-year-old child in the face and then throwing me across a room? Right. The answer is I'd leave. Yep. Or I'd be claiming self-defense in court. Yeah. Yeah. There's no witnesses. It's a lot easier to beat that case. I had gotten to a point I was so angry and resentful of the things he wasn't doing, but after listening to y'all, I sat down and asked myself, why do you assume he knows these things? Bitch. That moment where I sat down, I was like, well, I know what I want. And it's clear that he doesn't know when I blow up about these things that he doesn't know what I want. Like... That realization of, damn, you right. I should have just said it. That was on me. I'm sorry. That's life changing. Yep. There is that little bit of hurt pride in that moment of going, you're okay. A lot of things happen in that moment. That recognition of why do you assume that he just knows these things? For me, it's a flood of emotion when I recognize that moment because it goes back into my childhood. So just years and years and years of shame and guilt and I can't voice what I want. What a fucking shitty way to live. Yeah. So having those emotions of that guilt and that shame of, and my wants don't matter. When you recognize that you are wrong for assuming that he just knows everything, you have to face that shame and that guilt and in recognizing that you were failed in a lot of aspects and in those failures, you have also begun failing people. It's a mind trip. Yep. It's worth it though. And I am so glad that she was cognitive enough, cognitive enough to sit down and go, why, why am I assuming that he knows these things instead of just continuing saying, look, you're the fucking problem. I've told you 40 million times without being direct about what I want. Right. You should just know. Good for her. We've had so much good communication over the last month, and to my surprise, there were things I wasn't doing for him. She said shocker, right? <laughs> no, not really. Right. <laughs> that person in the relationship who feels so slighted and so wrong, and you've done me so dirty, you're supposed to love me, they feel the exact same way about you. Yep. More than likely, they feel the exact same way about you. Yeah. It's crazy when you shift your attention on things. So, obviously, I have things going on with me. I have autism. I have mental illnesses. Whole plethora of whatever is going on. There was a moment when we settled down. We changed the schedule. We had more free time. And I shifted my attention. I was like... Oh, damn, I haven't scrubbed behind the kid's toilet in like two months. We had a whole lot of life to catch up on. And like, we did it. Right. But you don't recognize what you neglect until you face it. Right. And then that acceptance of, I did that. Yep. That's on me. Yeah. 
it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. But once you are able to recognize that, hey, I slacked on that. What else am I slacking on? You broaden your perspective. You go from being a horse and fucking blinders to being able to see everything in your peripherals. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm talking too much. No. Why would you feel that way? I don't know. Just a lot of you sitting over there going, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you're... you're <laughs> it's just so... I look over there and I see you sitting like this and it's just like, you're going, mm -hmm, yeah, but I can see you going, that's my fucking woman. <laughs> Talking, being sexy with her glasses on. She's wearing that top I like. <laughs> <laughs> At least I hope that's what's going oh, on. Oh, man. <laughs> if that's the case, I'm going to feel a little bit better yeah, yeah, versus yeah. just... yeah. I'm boring you or something. You're definitely not boring me. You're, you're hitting the points. There's no reason for me to chime in and reiterate things that you're already hitting. Do you want me to like pause and have you have a discussion? I don't need to say shit. I'm good. Things are being said when I need to chime in, I do. Okay. Is it the shoulders? Are the shoulders doing it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that our life is getting back to normal. Me too. Me too. I'm going to start crying. <laughs> I really like the direction things feel like they're going. Me too. I've been saying for like a month now that I feel like there's an evolution coming in the podcast. I feel like things are about to shift. And like when you pay attention to things, you know, you know that if you need to make a change, you got to make the change. And like we're starting to do other things outside of this too. Like I, I'm starting to like, I'm ready to set an alarm for five o'clock in the morning to go do cardio and lift. Yeah. And like, I'm ready to like crank my life back down. Right. It, there's just I don't know there's a whole lot of things happening right now for us and, and like I'm I'm overly optimistic about it so yeah. I feel the same way you know I recognized the other morning when you told me that you got up at like 11 or midnight and princess was already on the couch sleeping I'm recognizing I could wake up at five o'clock in the morning and go for a run and the kids aren't going to bother you right I mean while well, the treadmill's hooked up in the gym so I can't. I can't run on a treadmill. I'll fall. I'll fuck something up. My yeah. teeth aren't going to be right. Something's going to happen. <laughs> I travel too yeah, much yeah, when I, I run. Um, there's a lot happening <laughs> and a lot moving when I run. Um, but yeah, I just... The last few recordings that we've done, minus that live that Sunday night, I just... I feel like we're getting back to who we... Yeah. To the root of us. And evolved version of us right well we learned a lot there's definitely a yeah. whole lot of learned experiences through all of that so in the event that we get emails that's got a little bit of that sprinkled in because the podcast will always be emails right they just may not be always that kind of emails they may be mm -hmm. this they may be something else it could be business content i, right. I don't know um i still have to do my camera video mm -hmm. like there's there's a lot that we're working on that's not just that shit mm -hmm. but like the expedited emails made it so that it was a job. People were paying us to do it. So we were obligated to take those and read that shit even when we didn't want to. So like, instead of just stopping going, okay, that's enough of this. We had to. Right. We were being paid to perform. Yeah. And we're not doing that anymore. I can't wait until Jeff finishes my monkey. I was just thinking about that. Yeah. So I, I do have full intention to get back into this email in this moment. I just want to tell you, I appreciate you working through that hard time with me. Yeah. We did it together. It's, it's, it's teamwork. This whole thing is us. I know. I just, there were a lot of times where we could have blamed one another for things or we could have taken frustrations or angers out on each other. And I appreciate you not doing that. Yeah. It's just not who I am. Yeah. I'm not going to blame you for something like that. I know. I'm, I'm doing this more to point out that we experience life the way other married couples experience life. And there are things that are going to be hard. There's going to be outside variables, variables that cause stress. And the podcast is a... We both have stress from the podcast, but it's a different stress for both of us. Right. And there are things like stresses with the podcast that you go through that I will never understand. And there are things that I have to go through that you'll never understand. Yeah. And in those moments, it was open. There was an option to where, you know, I'm fucking going through it. Leave me alone. And both of us in that moment had decided, like, we know what's going on. We know what's happening. We know what the root problem of our stress is right now. And we gave each other space or we leaned on each other. If I needed a shoulder to cry on you, I literally left snot on your shoulder the other morning. Yeah. Like, so I do appreciate the understanding then the grace that you have given. So yes, yeah, we're supposed to do. 
And I think couples need to realize that. How, how could we be on here preaching this shit if that's not how we lived our life? You right. know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Um, I don't know. So I am saying all of that to say this. Like I was saying, we are a normal married couple that experience things. Mm-hmm. And sitting here now in a moment of happiness and fun, looking back on those months where the podcast changed and everything just got so negative and the depression was kicking. Like we really could have fallen apart. We really could have. Yep. And in this moment now, looking back, I see how strong our bond is. Yeah. And we pushed through all that. We pushed through the bad emails. We pushed through the fucking depression that we were right. going through. Like we, we pushed through a lot. We did. And that does show us strength in who we are. Um, there was a, a lot of time where people were like, um, you can tell that they don't want to do this anymore. Their heart's not in it. This is not the same podcast. Like we saw all those comments. Yeah. The problem was, is we were trying to help people. Right. And when you're trying to help people and you're trying to do the right thing, sometimes the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Right. So it is what it is. We're, we're through that now. I, I feel like we're through that now. I feel like there's still evolution happening, but there's yes, there are still bumps in the road and things. I'm, I know I'm not gonna speak for you. There are things that I'm still figuring out and I'm trying to get my footing on. I am still in the throes of my mental illnesses and depression and whatnot. But I, I only got like 20 more percent to go yeah. before that storm's behind me now. Things are definitely getting a lot better. Once I took on the attitude, back to the email, <laughs> back to the email. Once I took on the attitude of I can only control my actions and reactions to things, boy, did our relationship change. Mm-hmm. I essentially loved him through my pain and anger and my actions directly led to him being happier and more receptive to those hard conversations. Our communication has vastly improved and we are both putting in the work now. It feels wonderful. Thank you for you all and all you do. Had a a, a moment just now. Okay. We need to call this episode. We're back bitches. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, QACDC. Back in black. I don't think we can do that. I think that that music would get us an account violation. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Can you can't. I acapella it? <laughs> Guy loose from the noose. <laughs> what is it? Each and every one of them. I, one I, and I, wild? I fucking hate ACDC. I, Each and every one of them. That dude's voice is like like yeah. a cat in a blender to me. It's so fucking bad. I just nailed it then. Yeah. I, that I, was good. Yeah, it's... He yep. does definitely have that cat in the blender sound. I get hyped when I hear ACDC, though. Yeah. The the rhythm is nice. Yeah. Just need a different singer. Yeah, his voice. If they, I don't know, put it down an octave or smooth it out a little bit. Yeah. Got the technology for that. Yeah. There's people that cover their music all the time. Yeah. Let's do one more because we're an hour and 30 in. Okay. We can do one more, make it to two hours. I'll be content with that. Or an hour and 45 because, you know. There'll be scenes cut. This email starts with greetings and salutations. <laughs> that was. Uh, uh, Isn't that Sheldon's? No, greetings and salutations, I think, is uh, Demolition Man. Greetings oh, and salutations. <laughs> uh, Lenina Husk Uxley. I love that high movie. Five. Yeah. Now I got to know. I have to know if I'm right. Okay. Greetings and salutations, fellow Earthlings. Um, comes from a specific film, and I don't have a clue. Google isn't helping. Are you going to be cutting all of this out? Uh, it's in, it's in the movie Heather's and Demolition Man, and no, I'm not because I I needed to know that. Okay. So we were right. All right. So I have never sent an email asking for your help simply because just listening to your podcast answered my questions I had and has helped an immeasurable amount. Love that. I've been listening since episode one and have become slightly obsessed in a healthy way. When I first started listening, I was single, lonely, depressed, and a strong, independent woman who didn't need a man. (laughs) Congratulations. You were adulting. (laughs) (laughs) I thought you were going to hit her with a congratulations on the graduation. Yeah, that's funny, too. Fast forward seven months, I've implemented the accountability and tools necessary to be in a thriving relationship with the father of my child. (gasps) Stop it. I love that. (laughs) We were stuck in the cycle of an on and off relationship for eight years, and your podcast put a floodlight on the issues we kept encountering and helped us break the cycle and choose a different path. That kid's going to have a whole new life. Yeah. 
That's amazing. Yep. Our history, we did everything wrong and had absolutely no foundation. After dating for two months, we found out we were pregnant and slowly began making decisions that caused us to grow apart. By the time our daughter was three, we were in full roommate mode and complete strangers. We broke up for a year and got back together for two more years, which led us down the same cycle as nothing had been addressed or changed. Throughout that sixth year, we had half-assed tried to make it work. However, I had always had one foot out the door and left him confused most of the time as to what the hell we were doing. I wonder if she heard that that episode where I was like, I can tell you what you fucking do. Put both feet back in the door. Right. <laughs> Yep. That is so confusing for anybody. It is. It is. It's it's hard for the person that's living like that. Right. There's no commitment there. There is no commitment. You know, on the on the receiving end of that, if we're in this situation, you're telling me to my fel- my face, yeah, babe, I want to be with you. I want to make this work, yada, yada, yada. And then I catch you looking at apartments. Okay, yeah. what are we doing? Yeah. And then as the person doing that, pick one. Yep. You know, you you can't divide your energy into making up a backup plan just in case and then also trying to focus on plan A. Both scenarios are draining and I'm not about that. After finding a video on TikTok, something took a hold of me and I needed to find your full content and this is where my obsession began. I didn't share it with him as I still was in a victim mindset and was listening to boost my ego slash get confirmation that it was his fault. Guess that didn't work out for you, though, did it? (laughs) I love that it blew up in your face. (laughs) Uh, I can see it now. "Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. I knew I was right. That's right, Jason. They're fucking agreeing with me on my high horse. And then like that, that one thing out of the blue, just side blinds her, right? Knocks her off that fucking horse and she's just laying on the ground. What just happened? Birds flying in a circle above her head. <laughs> and in that moment, she knew she was the problem. Yeah. <laughs> that just proves that all the clipping that we do and the clips that we intentionally make to piss people off and trigger them fucking works. Right. <laughs> Back to the email, it wasn't. It wasn't all his fault. The more I listened, the more I hated the woman I had been to him. Mm. He wasn't perfect and never will be, yet he never gave up on me, never mistreated me, and never intentionally hurt me. Pause for for effect, right? Because that was a fucking hell of a statement. He never intentionally hurt me. That is a hell of a statement. Part of the reason my first marriage didn't work out is because I always held the things against my ex-husband that he never intentionally meant to do. Yeah. Along with the things that he did intentionally did. You know, I would combine the two and be like, look, no, you're just an asshole who doesn't care about me. When I should have cut him slack on the things that he didn't intentionally do and improved on. Right. That's on me. And in our marriage, that is something that I still have to check. You know, I worked on that before getting into the relationship with you. And that is something that I still actively have to work on. You know, you can have the most well-trained dog. If you release that dog into the wild and they survive out there for a little bit, they're going to have to relearn the things that they did to be the, you know, don't attack human beings for no reason. Yeah. Don't start attacking dogs for no reason, whatever it is. So I still have to check those moments where... I'm all in my feels and I come to you about something and you apologize and you're like, I see that it hurt you. I'm sorry that I hurt you. It wasn't my intention. It won't happen again. That's the end of that conversation. Yep. That needs to be the end of those conversations. Right. Now I have to sit internally and I have to fight that little fucking gremlin in my brain and go, look, no, he just acknowledged the fact that I'm hurt. He accepted the accountability that his actions hurt me. He apologized and he's changing the actions going forward. That's what I wanted. Right. That is what I wanted and he gave it to me. So how am I going to sit here and continue to go, no, fuck him? Come on. <laughs> and like, I, I will admit it. There are times where I still have to sit down with myself and be like, bitch, come on. You're being irrational. Yeah. Like, get it together. This is not why he married you. This is not why he's with you. Keep it together. Yeah. I'm stern with myself just the way I'm stern with all you fuckers. Like, <laughs> 
And a lot of people would be ashamed to admit that they have those thought processes still. I'm not ashamed of that. I have said it before. I am not my thoughts. Yeah. I am able to separate myself from those thoughts and go, that's not right. He doesn't deserve that. Goodbye. Am I repeating myself at this point? No, I mean, okay. technically, yes, because we've said all this a thousand times already. But in this moment, no. Okay. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm not on that cycle of driving the same point home. Which is exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> is it? I mean, isn't it? When we're having a moment and I, I apologize and like I'm telling you that I'm I'm accepting the accountability and you feel that gremlin telling you that you need to just oh, keep damn, driving that right. point it home. Oh, right. It is a form of that. Yeah. yeah it's Minus the, same the thing. aggression and the toxicity. It's yeah. still a cycle. Yep. So let's break that and go go back to the email. Hmm. Just in case. Would you look at that? <laughs> revelations. Ruminations and revelations. <laughs> Too bad this is a podcast. It is a podcast. <laughs> I could see how I caused our breakdown in communication as well as emasculating him and overpowering him with my own masculine energy and how I'd leave if there was any bit of discomfort. I believe he would have lived as a shell of himself forever if it meant that he got to be with me, which now breaks my heart. Oh, God. Yep. Damn. You know, that's that's most men. That is. That is most men. That is most men. You were that man. Yeah. That is most men. Most men will get to their fucking breaking point before they finally decide to end a marriage or a relationship. And it'll go on for way longer than it should have. Yep. That's why women initiate most divorces. Why are you looking at me like that? Because I just had a whole thought process. Men, really good, loyal men will stay a decade Longer than they should with a woman who treats them like absolute shit. And women go, I can't find a man who will commit. I can't find a man who who will just be with me. You put out the energy that you receive. Yep. So if you're finding a man or multiple men, repeated men, who are with you for three or four months and treat you like absolute shit and then discard you and move on and be with your best friend. Hmm. You're the problem. Hmm. Yep. Common denominator is you. No, it's just crazy. It was brand loyalty. Another example, we had that conversation the other morning. Yeah. Dudes will die on that fucking hill if Chevy is the best. Save that for your video too. Right. I am going to save that. It's just. That was a really good conversation. The loyalty is there. Any men that's ever owned a pair of red wing boots, you know exactly what we're talking about right now. Just saying. (laughs) There's men out there right now being like, yeah, he ain't never wearing nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got my boots on right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those were my work boots, but I wear them every day. Mm-hmm. They're more comfortable than my regular shoes. I hear men say that too. Yeah. Because those are the shoes they're in all the time. Mm-hmm. They'll go shopping in those shoes because that's what's comfortable to them now. Yep. yep. Back to the email with the help of your podcast. I broke myself all the way down and plummeted to my absolute rock bottom. I wanted to die thinking of the person I had been. Girl, I get that. When I had that prolonged period of time of self-discovery and rebuilding myself and the self-growth and recognizing my own toxic traits, that was my lowest of my depression. That was where my self-worth was at its lowest when I recognized that I was, I am the bad guy in a lot of people's stories. I get that. Instead, I started to rebuild into who I wanted to be, not just for him or our family, for me. I couldn't remember a time in my life that I hadn't lived in fight or flight. I can't remember a time being truly happy with myself or my life, no matter what I achieved. I had never had boundaries or self-worth. I did not want to be that little girl anymore. So with your help, I chose a different path, the path to being a fucking woman. And say it with your chest. She did. Fucking love it. I am not ashamed of my femininity. I'm not ashamed of my grace. I'm not ashamed of my elegance or the way that I articulate myself. I'm not ashamed of the way that I look. I'm not ashamed of my husband. I'm not ashamed of my submissive in our marriage. And I am not ashamed of being a stay at home wife. I am a fucking woman. I am a proud feminine woman. I am a proud soft woman. 
I don't I don't see why people have an issue with that. I know what she said was she doesn't want to be that little girl anymore and she wants to be a fucking woman. There are multiple ways to be a woman. No, I'm going to save this for the conversation. I need to stop. I'm, okay. Mm, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> Good for you, girl. Good. No, woman. Good for you, woman. You fucking woman. You get it. You <laughs> bitch. March of 2023, I opened up completely to him about my emotions, fears, faults, thought processes, mental illnesses, traumas, literally everything. I told him how I lived the way I did because I couldn't let go of the past to choose a better future. I couldn't let go of the past to choose a better future. I know people in their 70s still living in the past. And their past is their their present. And their past is their future. They're stuck. (sighs) Talk about hell. How my default processes had failed me and kept failing me and how I no longer wanted to operate from that space. I detailed all the ways I had been operating in my masculine energy and expressed that I was now willing to let that version of myself go. I wanted to be a good woman and embrace all the facets of my femininity. I wanted to submit to a man worth leading and how he was the only one I wanted to do that with. So she knew she had a man that was that was capable of leading, mm-hmm. that she was willing to submit to, and she was still sabotaging her fucking marriage mm-hmm. or relationship. It's a lot. What do you think about it? That's a lot. It's even more to think about that she could have missed out on everything yep. with him and their child together. Yep. There could have been another woman in her place living the life that, that she, she wants. wants. Yep. Damn woman. Yep. That's it. That's fucking it. Yep. Yep. He held me and we both cried tears of joy and pain and we released all of it. We implemented check-ins and did them weekly for all of March. And by June, we had unlocked, open, honest, completely transparent conversation, which flows in our everyday life now. And you no longer need the check-ins. Right. Because you know how to talk to each other now. Mm Mm-hmm. I also introduced him to the podcast in March and was surprised by him stepping into other aspects of the good man's role. He opens doors, sits down so he's facing exits, has constant contact with me when we're out and holds the space for me to be truly free in all aspects, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, and crazily in my own awkward, fun way that brings life to any space we're in and encourages his own adorable, goofy self to be in as well. That's us. That is us. That yeah. is us to a fucking T. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I just want to point out. So she said that he is now always facing exits. As your wife, I cultivate that. When we walk into a building, you open the door and I'm the first one in. And mm-hmm. when we get led to a table, I'm the first one walking to the table. I make sure you have the seat facing the door. Right. Because you know, you know, I want it. Right. I don't have to ask for that shit anymore. Like no. it's just ingrained in who we are. Yep. Yeah. So for women who want that, I want my husband to open the door for me. I'm not touching the door. Yeah, you stand there and wait. I will. Yeah, I do. Yep. I do. I will get to that door before you get there and I will step aside and I'll hold my hands in front of me and I'll look around and I'll wait. And I'll see women watching me and you'll walk up and you'll open the door and then I'll walk out. Yep. Because. Tell me that's not a flex. My husband's got me. So so there. Okay. I have been berated for that, for opening the door for people, right? You're allowing her into a building. I actually have had somebody say something to me. And like, there was a TikTok made about it and I got fucking ripped apart by the feminazis and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But when we're in public like that and you stand there and wait for me to open the door, tell me that doesn't make you feel powerful. Right. Like, you want to talk about servitude? Yeah. Watch this. (laughs) Man's going to open the door, watch. And then I do. You want to know what else is going to happen? He's going to open the car door. I'm going to wait outside the car door, too. Yeah. Yep. I'm not touching that hot hot car door. I'm not opening it. My arms are weak. I just got my nails done. There's a power in that. I'm really hung up on the servitude of it now. It is is servitude. As a stay-at-home wife, I'm a slave and a gender traitor and I'm oppressed. My husband doesn't love me. I joke around when I'm in public. Like if a friend opens the door for me, that's right, peasant. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but your husband does it all the time. Right. But we make jokes like that in right. society. Yeah. Because it is a form of servitude. I'm not going to touch that damn door. You're going to touch that door. Yep. And in marriage, it's a respect thing. You do it out of respect for me as my man. Don't touch that door, baby. I got you. Yep. That bottle's too hard to open. I got, don't cut your hands. Give me that. Give me it. Ah. Who is the simp in this relationship? Is it really me? Come on. No, it is. I look sweat off your forehead. Come on. (laughs) (laughs) All right. We are in a space that honors and respects each other's differences and similarities. We honor and respect our relationship. We are truly a team. That's what it's supposed to be. That's in my women's speech. Yeah? Yeah. I am so excited about my women's speech. I am looking forward to all of the reactions. I want there to be emotion. I want there to be that want to be better. I want to piss some people off. I want to light a fire if you do it right, you will. Because yeah. I got all all sides of that. Love, hate, and otherwise. I want all of it. Had women saying, I sent this to my teenage kid. Good. Yeah. Yep. You know, I am also writing this with in mind that there's going to be a nine-year-old listening to this. Yeah, an eight-year-old. Our youngest fan is now eight years old. There's going to be an eight-year-old listening to my call to women. Yep. You know, I'm sitting out there and I'm typing this up. And I'm thinking one day our daughter is going to listen to this. Yeah. Yeah. I want this. I want our call to actions to be something that's documented on the fucking news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe when we get to a million followers, we'll have some shit Could like you that imagine? pop off. I don't know. I mean, there, there, are, there are YouTubers that make it to the news all the time. Conservative Ant, who was supposed to be on the pod. I, don't, I need to reach back out to him. He, he made it onto the news a couple times. I want to plant the seeds for Daily Wire. Yeah. You reach out to um, have your people call our people, Brett Cooper, and be like, Hey, I want to be on your show. I'm obsessed with her. Should reach out to her. What's what's, what's, worst going to happen? You're going to get ignored. What happened when I emailed Bunny's manager twice? (laughs) You did it again. (laughs) I did it again. Yeah, I'll probably do it again here in the next week or so. She sent a picture of us with it. (laughs) Yeah, send a link to our YouTube channel. Yeah. Thank you for showing me that it is actually possible that there is power and freedom that comes in submitting to and needing a good man. That I could truly love and appreciate every aspect that this good man is. We have solid boundaries and expectations and love to serve each other. Now that we both listen, we talk about certain things that get our attention and it has opened up conversations we wouldn't have thought to have otherwise. I kind of rambled through this. I just needed to send it. You guys are making such a huge difference. You are restoring connection and helping people to see how they may be the problem and giving them tools to change and to be better. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for being the catalyst that saved my family and myself. I will forever support y'all as much as I am able to. Really, truly, thank you. All right, so the best way to support the channel is to share the content, guys. If you guys found something of value in anything that we do, whether it be TikTok, a short something you saw on Facebook or Instagram, share the content. The more people that see what we're doing, the more we're going to grow and the longer we're going to be here doing this. We've said that we would continue doing this as long as the, the channel's growing. Yeah, and the it, channel's growing. It's growing. Um, we're at, we hit, we'll hit 115,000 on YouTube today. <sighs> we're at like 14.7, one, wow. 114.7, something like that. Um, my, my TikTok just rolled to 1.1. Yep. I'm it, at almost 750. Yeah. It, it's we're not, I'm not actually at 1 million 100 yet. It's like right. 1, 1 million 50,000, I think, is when it rolled to 1.1. But we're doing it. People, we're still growing. It's slowed down. We yeah. definitely saw a slow thing through July, but it's picking back up now that July is ending. Mm-hmm. Um, so she said that she'll support us however long she can, the best way she can, share the content. Tell people about us. Yeah. Patreon goes a long way. Buying shirts goes a long way. All of that kind of stuff helps financially. That's super dope because it allows us to take the time away from an actual job to be here doing this. Mm-hmm. But sharing the content is the best way to support the fucking channel. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have anything else that you would like to discuss? We're coming up on two hours and I really need to pee. No, not particularly. I need shopping. I need to get done. I have shopping. I need to get done. Yeah. I need to go look at poker tables mm-hmm. and pick up trucks. Let me know what you decide, daddy. Oh, With that being said, remember, guys, you are the author of your own life. So grab a pen. And write that shit down. Uh, No, wait. We'll see you on the next one. (laughs) Bye, guys.